Hello everyone, my name's Rindy, and I've been going for unique achievements and unique goals in RuneScape for the last 15 years. Now with all of my game knowledge and experience, I have found the perfect way to put this to the test. This is by doing quests, mini games, and any other achievement in game with bare minimum requirements and high tier restrictions. All to be done on a hardcore Iron Man, meaning I can lose my status and end the series at any time. But that's not all. The only consumable food which gives hit points, which I will be allowed to use, is that of a raw potato. Therefore, I welcome you to my new series. Potato only. Hardcore Iron Man. Welcome back everyone to the fourth installment of Potato Only Hardcore Iron Man. In the last video of the series, which I'll link in the description below, we unofficially QA tested Death to Dorgachen, as well as finishing it, along with getting the cannon, cannonballs, and recoils for further quests. In today's episode though, I will be using the newly achieved cannon in order to do some quests that are a little more risky. Even on these smaller quests, I spent much time researching the most effective route to take on this very restricted Iron Man. So once again, I will be covering tips and unique mechanics all throughout this video. Therefore, towards the end, if you enjoyed this content, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed. So we start off today's episode with the Fight Arena quest. Now you might find that ironic because you can't actually set up a cannon in the Fight Arena quest, and today's episode was based around the cannon. But of course, once again, we found ways around this, and I will get into that soon. So to start the quest, we talk to Sammy and the guard who we find out needs a Cali Brew. But have you guys ever noticed the staircase behind the guard? Well actually if you go up this staircase to the third floor, there is another General Kazard NPC with the exact same coding as the one in the arena. But with the same in the arena, you cannot attack the general to the very last step in the quest. Therefore I had the idea if I could somehow attack and kill the general, I could skip that entire phase of the quest without even having to go in the arena. Unfortunately though, killing this with a cannon which you otherwise couldn't attack it with, didn't complete any step in the quest. So I was thinking, what if I killed the general in the arena? and I decided to try and use a magic spell which actually allowed me to attack the general. I realized though that once doing this, this did not actually skip any part of the quest dialogue. Although, this helped me realize something I will be using a lot later in the video. So I got the cell keys, but I still needed to formulate a way to kill the NPCs in the fight arena. I still have no poisoned weapon. I do have recoils, but to register the kill, I would need to hit a 1 on each NPC, which would result in a lot of HP EXP. As well, the last boss is the bouncer and it will hit over my HP as it maxes a 13, therefore I can't really even recoil this NPC. So I either needed to find a way to get a poison dagger as well as risk HP EXP by going to rogues and wilderness, or just go find a way to use the cannon. Obviously I took the latter, and by doing this research I basically found out you can actually hit through the gate with a cannon in the fight arena quest in two different locations. Finding this out gave me an even better idea, and I wondered if I could actually just do the quest in the complete safe area of outside the gate. Unfortunately though, the kills are area based, and if you kill the NPC outside of the area, it will not proceed to the next step of the quest. In the arena itself, there are not many safe spots you can lure the NPC to that the cannon can actually reach. But I managed to find one that was very unique in the southwest corner of the gate. But having the cannon outside the gate means I cannot refill it and I would have to rely on one set of cannonballs to kill the NPC that is currently on me. So I used a method I've known for a while which involved interfacing for the long run in order to avoid the cannon shooting as much as possible. Your cannon is player based so interfacing actually stalls the entire cycle of the cannon until you click the map again. With many Khazard warriors and imps in the area, using this method actually probably stopped my cannon from firing half of its ammo. So then I talked to Sammy in order to safely lure the ogre out of its cage and move to the safe spot. After I got the ogre into the spot, I went ahead and took my interface off to let the cannon fire. Once the interface was off, the cannon was free firing, so I also had some alts just help me out a little bit by clearing some of the NPCs out of the area on the other side of the fight arena. So automatically after you kill the ogre, you're taken back to the jail and escorted back out to the fight arena once again to then take on the scorpion. 
Now if I didn't click off the interface like I just did here, the scorpion would have came out of its cage, stalled you, and would have gotten at least one attack off on you before you are able to run to the safe spot. As well, it turns your run off even though it says it's on by going through this stall. So if I didn't just pop an interface after being escorted out, I could have possibly just died. So I went and once again talked to Sammy, but from a safe distance to spawn the scorpion. So now I had the scorpion in place, but my cannonballs were running low. Luckily, I found out from here that as long as you're the only person in the world doing the quest, you can go back and attack the same NPC you left off on. Thankfully, in this world, no one crashed me while I was doing the quest. Now though, re-entering the arena is a little bit different. Typically, if you try to re-enter the area with or without your Khazard armor equipped, the guards will then escort you straight back into the arena and make you have a longer stall once again, risking getting banged out by the scorpion. Luckily I found a way around this, as it's an NPC check, not an object check with the door. You can enter the door normally if you kill the first NPC in front of the door, as well as wait for the second NPC behind the door to go past a lag line further back. Once I got past this first door, I headed to the second door, which is the entrance to the actual arena. As well here, the Khazard guards will check you and send you in with the longer stall if you do not kill them first. So I decided to kill these guards as well in order to time my entry with the scorpion or other NPCs far far away from the door. This wasn't as important to do with the scorpion, but if I was later to do the normal entry with the bouncer, he would then give me a longer stall and the bouncer would hit me without me being able to move and the bouncer actually maxes 13s, being able to kill me in one shot. From here I go ahead and release the interface to go ahead and kill the scorpion that I left earlier. As well I go ahead and let the bouncer spawn here so I am in a safe area when the stall occurs whenever he is released from the cage. Now my cannon is almost out of ammo at this point, but I get a few hits on the bouncer and everything really counts. This is because I have to do this as fast as possible and run back every time because if another person starts doing this quest, they will get the same bouncer, clear it, and then I will be stuck with the cage spawn at the beginning of the entrance. Meaning, if someone did do the quest at the same time, I would have to redo the entire bouncer kill, which in this case took almost an hour. As well, you can't leave the arena, you actually have to teleport out. So every time my cannon ran out of cannonballs, I would have to teleport out, back to Barbarian Assault or Castle Wars if the minigame time allowed. From there, walk all the way back to the fight arena and position the two accounts to kill the guards to enter properly inside once at the arena. Once I did this, I would just take the bouncer to the safe spot until my cannonballs ran out and repeat the whole process till it was dead. This took around 4 teleports for the bouncer only, and after he was dead General Kazard actually went and auto aggressed me, but luckily I was already in the safe spot and could just teleport out for the 5th time. So finally I was able to claim the reward for what you think is the simple but actually complex fight arena quest. Next I had planned to move on to the monkey madness requirements which was tree gnome village and the grand tree. So before I get into those quests, those quests actually require alternate accounts, and I know some of you hate that idea. Now I originally didn't even want this series to be an Iron Man series, it's more of a hardcore series, meaning I'm just trying to do anything to mitigate death, and if that includes alternate accounts, then so be it. As it would be pointless for me to just take RNG as chance and doesn't really show any skill set or knowledge in the game. In my opinion, using all your available resources to survive in a hardcore series such as this is what it's all about. So straight off the bat in the Grand Tree Quest, I had a pretty far-fetched idea. The first thing King Narno does before he even starts the quest with you is take you downstairs to show you the Deconia problem with the tree. Now I already knew here that the instance after the quest under the tree was different than the one during the quest. So I thought the one before the quest may have been different as well. But boy, was I wrong and I found out that actually the beginning of the quest instance is the same as the one used later with the Black Demon during the quest. Therefore I could actually hang out around the Black Demon towards the end of the quest with the quest not even started. But the demon could not be attacked if it wasn't my NPC. But I also remembered earlier from the fight arena quest that you could manual cast an NPC in some instances that was not yours. So I ended up being able to actually kill the demon with the Grand Tree quest not even started and I thought that maybe I had stumbled upon a crazy quest step skip once again. 
Unfortunately though, I was not able to find the Deconia rock on the account I killed the demon, or actually even talk to King Narnode and get the right chat dialogue. But maybe I can use the idea to attack part of the demon later on in the quest. So next I had to run towards the island near Port Kazard in order to talk to Hazelmere, but I had to pass through some spiders first. These jungle spiders can actually two hit me, so I decided to try and wait for Diagro with my other account in front. After waiting about 30 minutes, I realized that jungle spiders actually don't ever Diagro and they're a very unique NPC. So from there I basically said screw it, watch my account to the next step in the quest, and just took the damage. Next I had suspicions for Glow, so I was locked up in a cage and forced to evacuate the island. Usually at this point in the quest, you're supposed to take the glider right next to you and use the password given to you in Karamja by Charlie. Fortunately though, I thought ahead, and I actually realized that if you take the glider to Karamja, you will be forced into a stall where a bunch of jokers can attack you and they can easily two hit me. So I had to think of a way around this which led me to not follow the quest journal's steps. I attempted to skip the glider phase of the quest and just go straight to Karamja in a much safer route. First though, I stumbled across the problem that you can't even leave the gate in the gnome stronghold at this point in the quest, so I had to go ahead and teleport out. From here I went on my alt to route a safe passage to the Joger area and then to the gate with the shipyard. Although this took a lot more time, it was definitely worth not getting killed by Jogers or Jungle Spiders or Tribesmen, which there was all of these along the way. After overcoming those two obstacles in the quest, I was finally ready for the final boss. Shit, or was I? First though, did you know you can take back these sticks off the platform and the gate just remains unlocked? So I really did it because I like the T and the O, I just wish they would have made like another T and a P and an O and an A. No, in all seriousness though, let's get to this boss. So I went ahead first, put my alt account down in the instance area, and used it as a blocker. As we found out earlier, you really didn't even need to start the quest, so you could literally just go down here and get a blocker instantly as long as the quest isn't complete. Next I went in the shared instance on my hardcore Iron Man, but this time I actually spammed the logout button, so as soon as the demon spawned, I would log out and take no damage. Although this despawned the demon and I would have to go all the way back up the ladder and back around to the same instance, I was able to put my cannon down in a safe spot without the demon or anything else on me. From here I walked back and returned to the instance, where I once again found myself facing the demon. And I almost majorly fucked up here. Luckily my hand was over the logout button so I was able to escape that way, but my blocker actually had the demon go through its body because I forgot once logging back in on the blocker to step one square out and then one square back to where I was originally standing. For some reason on login if your account doesn't move it will pretty much become transparent. So I had to go back all the way around into the instance on the hardcore once again. This time my blocker actually worked and I used the mechanic I discovered earlier in this video in order to manual cast the demon to just above half HP. That's because this demon has a despawn timer of 10 minutes, meaning I have to kill this thing as fast as possible before it disappears. Only having 20 something range made this very difficult to do in time, and therefore by using the main to kill over half its HP sped up the process just enough. As well, there were a lot of low-level rats around that literally had a respawn rate of about 1 second, and they used my cannonballs extremely fast, and these cannonballs would take me hours to make with my slow money-making process on the restricted account build. So by using the alternate account, I was able to save cannonballs, able to kill it before it despawned, and able to finally complete the quest the Grand Tree. Now the last quest I wanted to complete on this account today is the Tree Gnome Village quest. I went ahead and made it to the village after passing the two aggressive hill giants, and from there got the nice handy quick follow option to get to and from the village after starting the quest. Did you guys know that the catapult the gnomes fire towards the Khazard can actually damage your character if the RNG actually decides to land on your tile? So I actually had to kind of stay out of that area this whole quest. One of the parts of the quest I actually needed an alternate account on was that of getting the first orb. That is because after you climb over the rubble after shooting the ballista at the Khazard fortress, you actually get stalled when the Khazard guard tries to talk to you and cannot eat and get hit multiple times without being able to move. 
therefore I needed accounts that were actually partially through the quest or had actually finished it entirely. The same goes with the chest upstairs when you search for the orb, as you will stall for a brief few ticks and the guard will come over and attack you. But I got the orb and once I returned it, I headed back to the final battle. Now the final battle has changed recently and the Khazard Warlord is actually an instanced NPC, meaning only you can attack the NPC that is spawned. As well, you now have to talk to this NPC to initiate the battle rather than just being able to attack it. Unfortunately, when you talk to this NPC normally, he will just hit you right at the end of the chat dialogue without you being able to move in time every single time. This is very bad for me because this guard can hit a 10 and instantly one hit me. So once again, here comes another out of the box strategy which will require an alternate account in order to mitigate the RNG of the boss. First I waited for the boss to wander around a little bit south of the north wall. Once doing this I talked to the boss but I did not actually go through the first option as this would stop him from walking. Therefore I let him walk a little bit longer around to the northern side of the gate and put an alternate account between me and the boss before finishing the chat dialogue. This allowed for a split second for the boss not to be able to one hit me off the start of the fight. And from here I ran south to the only tree you can really stand behind and fire a cannon in the angle of the boss. As I was running back, I threw a weakened spell to lure the boss over where my cannon was. This is because if you do not attack the boss fast enough, he will despawn entirely and you have to start over the entire fight. So once I was behind the tree, I started firing the cannon and the boss landed right in the pocket of my first alt account. This allowed the boss to be trapped in the perfect angle for my cannon to hit it. Standing behind this tree was somewhat necessary, as if the low level warriors spawned and attacked me, they would make my cannon immune to the boss and the boss would despawn. Therefore I had my other alt account go ahead and kill the warriors as soon as they spawned. After many many cannon hits I finally killed the warlord, got the three orbs, and headed back to finish the quest. So that's it in conclusion of today's episode, I hope you enjoyed the unique cannon mechanics as well as other strategies used throughout the series. If you enjoyed this video and you want to catch the next one as soon as possible, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I think you know what I'll be trying next.